So last time on Dragon Ball Super BG, Goku after reviving his mother and father Gine and Bardock, began then introducing them to the rest of the Z Fighters for the first time. The most shocking revelation to them being the fact that Prince Vegeta was also alive on Earth too. After a comedic meeting between the two headstrong Saiyans, Bardock then revealed his dream to have beaten Frieza before he destroyed Planet Vegeta. And with that, Vegeta then revealed the newly repaired time machine, shocking everyone in the process and in today's manga, we'll see exactly how the group of Saiyans intend to use it. But before we begin, support this video and channel by leaving a like right now as you're reading this and watching till the very end for its intense conclusion. Enjoy. So our story continues with a confused and shocked Bardock looking on at Vegeta after his recent reveal. Understandably, he questions further. T time machine? Kakarot? What is he talking about? What is that? I've never heard of such a thing. Gine, meanwhile, chimes in also with a curious face saying, Hmm, time machine? A machine that creates time? Son, I'd like to know more too. This planet never ceases to amaze me. Haha. <laughs> But Goku not really being the best of scientific explanations, then puts his hand behind his head and begins to say, Well, I can't say I know how it works, but I do know it can allow you to travel to either the past or the future. A long time ago, a boy from the future arrived using it. And he killed Frieza as well, funnily enough. <laughs> I've used the machine myself too, to visit his timeline. So I think I could get us back to before Planet Vegeta was destroyed, if you really wanted, Dad. However, after hearing of Vegeta's lies over him being the one who dispatched of Frieza last episode, Bodok and Gine are left comedically confused as they both then ask, Huh? A boy from the future killed Frieza? But Prince Vegeta just said he did! However, a blushing Vegeta who has almost been caught out once again then butts in and says, Ahem, yes, I did, but uh, someone managed to revive him with the Dragon Balls, just like you were. Yes, yes, that's it. I would have taken up Frieza again, but this boy from the future just got there before me. <laughs> I guess great minds must think alike. Almost like the son I never had. <laughs> but with the awkwardness now out of the way, Vegeta's face soon then gets back to serious as he faces Bardock and says, But anyway, the important thing, Bardock, is that with this time machine, you will indeed be able to accomplish what you wish. It can take you back just before our planet's destruction and you can single-handedly wipe that annoying smile off our enslaver's face. You alone will get to do what every Saiyan that day, including my father, could have only dreamt of. You'll have one chance, so don't mess it up. Before Vegeta is then seen laughing hysterically, <laughs> and I will most certainly be there to watch it and have some fun myself. I can't believe I never thought about doing something like this before. This will be hilarious. Much funner than cleaning the poop of Buller at least. While an unimpressed Bulma however then butts in with her finger, scolding Vegeta saying, Excuse me, Mr. Big Shot Prince, but number one, it's me who's left to clean Buller 99% of the time, and number two, this is my machine not your toy to give out to your pals whenever you feel like your highness. And besides, we can't just travel back and forth in time and change big events like that. That's literally the one rule Trunks told us about. If he had made one wrong move, he might not have existed in our timeline anymore. Not to mention, if Beerus found out, you'd be dead and I'd be a single mama. I'm not Chi Chi, I won't stand for that alright? Hearing these words though, Bardock and Gine are immediately shell-shocked, yelling, But Beerus? The Destroyer Beerus? 
Don't tell me he resides here on Earth too! Kakarot! This whole planet is in danger! You have no idea how easily he could destroy us all! He was a feared legend on planet Vegeta, but I saw it myself! How even King Vegeta bowed before him! We need to escape! But Goku of course just smiles without any fear and replies, Yeah dad, we know. He's kind of our friend now actually. I already had a fight with him a while ago. I lost then, but I'm not sure it would be the same result if we had a rematch now. <laughs> he wouldn't hurt a fly on this planet anymore. He's too busy enjoying all of Bulma's food all the time. Don't worry, the planet's safe and so are you. I'll introduce you to him and his angel Whis after we're back from our trip. A concerned Bardock hearing this then just responds, You... you fought Beerus you say? And you survived? I don't even know what to believe anymore. Everything on this planet feels like a fever dream. But I guess it's not implausible to believe when you've become a Super Saiyan. I never got to see what the Destroyer's full power was like. But I couldn't imagine it being much stronger than Freezer's. But either way, with our Prince Vegeta here, the Avenger of the Saiyans, there should be nothing for us to fear, right? <laughs> a cocky and pleased Vegeta then folds his arms, eyes closed with a smirk and responds, hm, Precisely, Bardock. I'm liking your father more and more, Kakarot. If only he had come here as a baby instead of you. And as for you, woman, no, don't worry about our time travel exploits. You simply just fail to remember the last time you went to the past to defeat a rogue Kai, that silly cat just ended up turning a blind eye. Even Beerus himself knows that some events in the timeline deserve to be changed. Whether it's Kakarot Black, the androids or Frieza, time travel is allowed for the purpose of putting an end to them. And with that, Vegeta then places his arm on Bardot's shoulder with a smirk and says, So it's settled. We will leave early in the morning. And Bardock, get rid of whatever this is you're wearing and bring your armor so you actually fit in. I don't know what Arj was thinking dressing you like this, but this is not how the Saiyans looked on planet Vegeta. If we look out of place, it will raise suspicion that will ruin the entire plan. Once we get there, I'll leave it all up to you. Only you would know where Frieza would be. So just get out there, show us your power, and do the Saiyans proud. <laughs> Bardock, now invigorated of Saiyan pride, looks back excitedly and says, Yeah. Yeah! Of course, my prince. I can hardly wait to see the look on that Freezer's face. <laughs> With the training I've had in hell, there's no way he could even stand a chance. I'll see you in the morning. Gine, Kakarot, let's go home now. It's been a long enough day. And so some time passes, and the next morning we see Gine, Bardock, and Vegeta back at Capsule Corp, standing next to the time machine. This time, now with all three in their respective Saiyan armors, ready to leave to the past, with Vegeta beginning, Good. So this is what your Saiyan armor looked like back then. Ah, this brings back memories. With Bardock responding with a smirk, Yep, Kakarot's woman managed to finally wash them for us. Good as new. Luckily, she didn't touch my bandana. Would have been a problem if Tora's blood got washed away. And Gine adds, But Prince, the Saiyan armor you're wearing doesn't seem to be from Vegeta. It looks odd. With Vegeta just explaining, Ha! Yeah. Well, this is the best my wife could do. It'll get the job done, I'm sure. Eventually, enough chit-chat goes by that Vegeta realizes there's still one man short as he looks around and yells, We're all standing here ready and that foolish son of yours isn't here yet. Where the hell is Kakarot? 
Gine, trying her best to then calm down Vegeta, just quickly responds, Uh, I'm so sorry my prince. He said he had some training to do in the morning, but I definitely told him the right time. That boy, he should be here any second. And suddenly, just in perfect time, behind Vegeta, Goku instant transmissions in. With it ticked off Vegeta, immediately reacting out of the corner of his eye. <laughs> Finally, clown! You're late! And you... Wait a minute! You came dressed in your silly orange earth clothing! I told you yesterday, we need to fit in, you imbecile! Can you not ever listen? Gah! Immediately, immediately getting angry at the totally taken off guard, Goku. Goku now embarrassed with a hint of shame, then quietly replies, Oh, sorry guys, I guess I didn't get that message. <laughs> I can still go though, right? I want to see Planet Vegeta too. Vegeta, now like an angry father, with his eyes closed, then just replies, <laughs> Typical! I should never rely on a clown like you! Whatever. We're here for Bardock anyway, not you! You're just going to have to stay hidden! Now enough talking! Let's go! And following this, all four Saiyans are then seen inside the time machine, with Vegeta waving goodbye with a smirk saying, See you later, woman! Have my dinner ready for when I'm back! Bye! Leaving a comedically unimpressed Bama looking back at her husband, just saying, How romantic. Love you too, honey. Be safe. And with that, the time machine vanishes. Now, in another timeline, in the deep reaches of space, we see the forgotten planet Vegeta. And on its surface, out in a desert, the time machine arrives. And a familiar set of feet land on the ground for the first time proudly. It is Vegeta and Bardock of course, and with a grin the prince says, Planet me! <laughs> ah, to be back home! My oh my, it's been a long time. Decades even! This air, this smell! I still remember this like it was yesterday, Bardock. And Bardock, who is equally enthralled to be back home, says, Ha ha! I know what you mean, sire. There's nothing quite like our home planet, is there, Prince? It's a shame Kakarot never grew up to know the beauty of this planet. For the first time since being revived, only now do I truly feel alive. Meanwhile, Gine and Goku also then eventually come out together. And Goku, with an oblivious smile, immediately lets out, So, this is where I was born, huh? Not much to it, really, is there? Kind of just a lot of rocks. Smells strange, too. It's a bit of a dump, really. Now I'm really glad you guys sent me to Earth instead. Instantly causing his father to facepalm himself as he mutters, Kakarot! Where's Raditz when you need him? <gasps> Bardock's face suddenly changes, however, as he senses something or someone in the distance. It can't be! This power! This feeling! It's the same as back then! Over there! It's... It's Frieza! He's beginning his attack! I need to leave now, Vegeta! Vegeta, however, understanding how time travel works, stops Bardock, saying, Wait, Bardock! If you go there now, the version of you that exists in this timeline might also be there. You two cannot meet. That would cause a lot of problems for obvious reasons. But Gine, who obviously remembers these exact moments, from then just interrupts, Hmm, no, judging by the darkness of the sky, at this time, Bardock and I would be in the mountains, just about to send little Kakarot off for the first time. Our goodbye was pretty long. We really didn't want to let go. I'd say we'd be there now for at least another 20 minutes. Vegeta hearing this then smiles and replies, 
Well, there we go! Perfect! We'll go meet that fool Freezer now and destroy his entire army right there and then. Kakarot, you and your mother can stay here. We won't need you taking the spotlight and ruining things with your clown outfit. Our plan will go off without a hitch as long as you're down here. A disappointed Goku, however, responds quickly, What? But Vegeta, that's no fair. I wanted to watch Dad fight too. Can't I just hide up there? I could probably just sneak into his ship somewhere. Their scouters won't detect me if I go as a Super Saiyan God. But Gine then has a small stroke of genius as an alternate idea comes to her. Wait a minute Kakarot, I have a better idea. You've seen Freezer die at least twice now. Let me take you to the mountains where me and Bardock are right now. We can hide and you can see firsthand exactly what it was like before we sent you off. Back then, Bardock and I couldn't sense energies at all, so we'll be fine. And that way, you don't need to leave me by myself. Goku thinking on this then smiles back and replies, Ah, not a bad idea, Mum. Sounds like fun. And I guess it could be interesting to see how you guys looked over 20 years ago. You guys look so young already. Leading to a comedic awkward silence as Goku seemingly forgets that when you die, you don't age at all. So Bodok and Gine would actually be the exact same age as they are in this timeline. And with that, the four saints then fly off, each on their respective quest. Goku and Gine heading towards the moment baby Kakarot was sent to Earth, and Bardock and Vegeta heading eagerly to face off with Emperor Frieza and save the entire Saiyan race in the process. Meanwhile, just above planet Vegeta in space, a familiar spaceship is seen. And below it, Frieza appears with a sinister smile ready to end the lives of millions of Saiyans in an instant. Saying to himself, Ha 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 ha, finally. Surrounded by his army of men including Dodorio and Zarbon, he yells with a smirk, Soldiers! Now is the time. We will once and for all get rid of these monkeys. Be prepared for them to fight back pathetically. So stand your ground and beat them back. Don't underestimate them. These vermin will survive like roaches, so when you go for the kill, make sure they're dead. There will be no survivors today. And when the time's right, when they think even for a split second they could fight back against the Freezer army, I'll send their defenses and their whole planet into the next dimension. <laughs> It will be beautiful, like fireworks, trust me. <laughs> to which his men then cheer in unison, shouting, Yeah! All hail Lord Frieza! Death to the Saiyans! Before suddenly a massive explosion from within the soldiers is seen, instantly wiping out the majority of Frieza's forces. Huh? Of course, Frieza, who at this point had never experienced such a setback, is left shot as he looks on. What? What the hell just happened, soldiers? Who is responsible for this? And emerging from the dust, two figures begin to appear from their silhouettes. And there, standing tall, are Bardock and Vegeta with Vegeta covering himself with a mask in hopes of hiding his true identity. While Bardock, looking on proudly at the disturbed Freezer comments, Sorry for the gate crash, but there won't be any fireworks for you this time, Freezer. Your days of terror end here! But that was it for today's video guys, and if you made it this far and want a part 6 ASAP, just drop a hashtag Bardock vs Freezer in the comments down below. This is my manga that I created and there are links to my Patreon to support me below, but if you want to watch more of my signature style of content, 
just click on one of these two videos on the right and I'll see you guys in the next video. Cheers.